All right, thanks everybody for joining. The uh, I know it's a, another webinar, another day of Zoom uh, or go to meeting, uh, but that's what we have for right now. Um, and I cer certainly appreciate your time. Uh, today we're going to talk about self-service access to property information. Essentially, how do you reduce counter traffic? How do you uh, deliver better service to the taxpayers? And how do you deliver information in a modern way? Uh, I'm Brent Jones. I'm the industry manager for land records at Esri, and I'm with uh, Lauren Volker, who's a solution engineer who specializes in land records. And I asked her the other day to ship a picture over, you know, so we could include it in the broadcast. And that's what she shipped over. So if you can't remember Lauren's name, just say, just recall it as a, uh, as Map Girl. So with that, I'm going to turn my camera off because I don't think you really need to see me. Concentrate on the slides, and we'll get going here. So the uh, first thing we're going to talk about is just some GIS in the assessor's office. GIS is really an underused utility tool capability infrastructure in your office. I'm going to give you a few ideas of maybe how you can use your GIS a little, you know, a little to a fuller extent. Uh, a few capabilities to talk about. We're going to talk about templates. And then, uh, then we're going to jump right in on uh, equity property value, which is a, a hub solution designed for modern public engagement for uh, for the assessor's office. We all know that ArcGIS and GIS in it itself improves how we do our work. It helps in field operations of collecting data, but it also helps in managing field assessors, whether you I have prescriptive times when you need to visit a parcel, uh, field safety where, where your employees are located. Uh, that's where it kind of all begins. And then we then we have tools for managing parcels. I'm sure you're all somewhat familiar with the parcel fabric. If not, we have a lot of resources on that. Uh, then after we have the data uh, on our uh, on our, our property data, then we begin to model, analyze, and visualize in order to deliver fair and equitable appraisals, how do we how do we know what is a good model? How do we visualize that? Can we add some data to that to improve our models? You know, how, what do we share internally to to ask questions, and what do we share externally? How do we engage the public, not just to tell them the values of property, but of the of all the data involved and actually how did we come up with those values a transparency in the operation not just a transparency with data some of the capabilities you may be familiar with are spatial analysis and modeling building models to understand how location impacts value uh, lauren along with the insights project manager did a really nice blog uh, on this recently if you haven't seen it i'll try to locate it when lauren's talking and paste it into the window but also, we do a lot of exploratory analysis with our data, trying to find the, the, where the outliers are. What, what's, why is this neighborhood have a higher COD or lower COD than this neighborhood? Um, and it really helps us to visualize our data, detect these outliers, and we can enrich our data with, with external data sets, visualize and manage this in 3D. And of course, some of the common workflows of managing imagery and looking at change detection and looking for where change actually occurs. A new area, an area, well, an area that might be new to you, it's it's been around at Esri for a while, is, is policy maps. So policy maps are more than just maps. It's the data that you can use to actually incorporate into your analysis and into your into your reporting. So we just finished the census. The detailed information on the census will be will be coming soon. You'll have access to that. And some of the current challenges we have, and many of you may have seen the reports on the University of Chicago study of the racial inequity in taxation. Well, there's a big story there. Uh, there's a lot of more data, a lot of more information, a lot more analysis that can be done to understand really what the what the impact is. It's if we're fair market value, well, is it is it, how does that really work with the TIFs and the and the enterprise zones, the 
are we delivering equitable tax? How do we visualize that? How do we communicate that? And how do we understand that? So there's a lot of analysis to be done. And actually, we're doing some work internally on that. If that's an area of particular interest to you, uh, we could use some we could use some help with that. I uh, use some input on what we're doing. Uh, and kind of on a side note, I don't know if you know how we build software, but we don't, you know, we just don't build something and throw it out there and hope everybody uses it. We work really closely with with users of, of GIS technology to understand what the challenges are and really work out the workflows and work out the components to, to build product. Another area that might be of interest is executive management. Do you know where your field force is? Do you know what the backlog is? Do you know what their schedules are? Do you have dashboards that you can, at a glance, understand what's the status of all the work in your organization and also the status of valuation? Why, you know, what are the trends? Are the trends, you know, three and a half percent last year, uh, residential, four and a half percent decline commercial. What are those trends and how do we how do we visualize that and communicate that to people who may not be as savvy with technology as others? We can build infographics, for example, for for commissioners and mayors and, and other policymakers. So there's a lot of ways um, to help us manage uh, our business with using some GIS tools. And for those of you that are not back in the office yet, there are some business continuity tools, you know, to help us reopen, uh, reopen safely. So I, I mentioned managing field operations. This is this is a uh, an area very uh, important to me personally because of spending a lot of time trying to get high accuracy into the into these workflows and you can use an external GPS and get single centimeter accuracy if you'd like. Generally assessors there's not a necessity for that but certainly for some workflows it's a uh, uh, it's handy. So you can you can track your employees. Now this is not designed to be a slacker tracker although it could be if you wanted it to be. It's really designed for when Appraisers go into hazardous areas or are far away from uh, a uh, a way to get connected. Where you know if you're you know out in the uh, at an agricultural land or something like that, and it's very hard to know where people actually are. You can you can locate you can track them for safety. Another is navigation. Now with navigation, you know we can all use Google to to get directions, but Sometimes those take us to the wrong place. And with your parcel maps, you can easily configure a locator. So when you say go to this parcel, it takes you to that actual parcel and not to uh, some address that might not be the actual address you want. And also you can you can optimize. If you know, for example, in your organization, you know, maybe your state mandate is you have to visit a property every five years. Well, you can opt you can see which properties need to be visited this year and you can optimize those routes and you can be start at home if you'd like. You start at the office, you can you know, start at your brother-in-law's house where you're spending the night. So there's other, there's it's a real time saver. Uh, we had one uh, one user do a time study where they uh, of, of all their appraisers time and 60 percent of their time was spent in the field. And the thinking was, if 60% of my appraiser's time is spent in the field, that's a logical place for me to put some investment to get some return. Then there's capturing some data in the field. Maybe you want to collect detailed information. Maybe you just want to hit a button and say, I drove by, I did a windshield visit of this. It is in the same condition. Maybe just two or three buttons with a quick capture application. Uh, Perhaps uh, on some properties you would like to go inside, but because of the pandemic we happen to be in, you really don't want to go inside. You can deliver a very simple application that doesn't take much at all to configure and deliver a link to someone who can take their smartphone and go in, in their house and take pictures for you. And those, those pictures will come back uh, into your system. So there's a lot of capabilities in the field that generate a lot of, uh, a lot of benefit. Now, that's what we're here to talk about today is public engagement and transparency. Now, transparency and public expectations, what those are have changed and will continue to change. It wasn't too long ago that a website was all you needed. 
with a parcel with a parcel viewer and maybe a few details about the parcel. It wasn't too long before that that a set of maps on a counter with a with a property card index uh, was what was considered engaging the public and having a conversation. And here's the data that we have. People expect different things now. They expect information to be easy to use. They expect it uh, on their mobile device, and they they expect to communicate with a mobile device. So what we're going to talk about today, Lauren's going to go into detail on a configuration of some ArcGIS technology called Equity Property Value that takes all these public engagement components, whether it's whether you want to communicate comparable sales or property information or flood maps or all those kinds of things, and wraps them into into a single publicly facing application. Now, before I pass this over to Lauren, I'd like to just lift the conversation up just a little bit and always remember that ArcGIS is an enterprise platform. It is enable it enables three critical systems in, in our offices, and one is the system of record. In our case, as an assessor, that's the that's the parcel map and that is the tax roll. The system of insight is the analytical models and data and maps and understanding trends and patterns and what actually impacts value how does location impact value how do how do we model this data and how do we visualize that data and then the system of engagement is how do we share that data how do we communicate that data to others internally to our bosses to the elected officials to policymakers and of course uh, of course the public Simply put, that is that is parcel management, value analysis, and public engagement are those three systems. The way we do this at Esri is we take this incredibly powerful geospatial infrastructure of ArcGIS, all the data, the applications, the cloud capabilities, the configurable components, all of this together, and then we look at individual industries and their specific challenges and workflows. In this case, it's land records. But we have those for health and human services, elections, uh, public works, uh, emergency management, law enforcement. You've, you've seen a lot of these around. If you have noticed any of the coronavirus dashboards, as you can imagine, that took a lot of our time uh, over the past year of, of building, configuring, uh, and deploying configurable applications for the public. And with that, I'm going to pass this over to Lauren so we can get into some details. And then uh, I'm going to check for questions to see if there's any questions. If not, please uh, please post questions in the chat if you have any. And uh, take it away, Lauren. So as Brent said, solutions are collections of useful and focused maps and apps geared toward a specific industry or purpose. And a lot of these solutions now have an ArcGIS hub page template included with them. So when you deploy the solution, you get an out of the box website template that can be used to engage with users, both internal or external. And it organizes solution content, those maps and those apps in an understandable way that really allows you to bring context and meaning to what you're sharing. So first I'd like to establish an understanding of what ArcGIS Hub is. ArcGIS Hub is a part of the Esri Geospatial Cloud and it's available through ArcGIS Online, which is Esri's SaaS model, so you don't need to have your own server. It's an easy to configure engagement platform that organizes people, data, and tools through information-driven initiatives. It helps you to maximize engagement in any type of organization by improving communication, collaboration, and data sharing. And it allows you to leverage existing data and technology and to work together with both internal and external stakeholders to advance your goals and initiatives. So what does it do? ArcGIS Hub allows you to share open data that is critical to decision making, and Hub can share this authoritative data that's used to help make better decisions. 
it allows you to create as many websites as you need with no coding required. Hub has a really great drag and drop feature that allows you to build websites using configurable card components. You can also incorporate your organization's branding to match existing websites. And you can share data and maps and apps all created to help you engage the community. Hub gives purpose to your data and aligns it with your organization's top priorities by organizing around goals and initiative. And this fits really well with any real world issue or challenge. It's not just about communicating with the public, but also internally. You can enable collaboration and create teams of staff, external members, or even invite trusted members of the community to collaborate with you. You can drive engagement and inspire action by sharing a goal to focus on and various ways to participate. You're sharing information using charts, maps, and stories, and this really makes it easier for everyone to have a shared understanding of that goal and the context in which that goal lies. ArcGIS Hub includes everything needed from an integrated event management to surveys to applications to more and work done in Hub can feed back into your ArcGIS online organization or other operational systems. So the Equitable Property Value Hub Initiative, what is it? It is a configuration of Hub Premium that helps you to increase public awareness of property information, particularly helping individuals to understand assessment and the property tax process. You allow access to property information that can help taxpayers understand their assessment and their property tax. And you're providing focused property information products for taxpayers, real estate professionals, title companies, and product owners. And you can also simplify outreach through focused events or deliver a simple and easy way to respond to appeals all while educating taxpayers. And really, it's a template that gives Gives you a starting place into which you can put your information, allowing you to rethink the way that you connect and communicate with the public and other entities, specifically as it relates to property value. Now I'd like to switch over and take a look at what the out of the box equitable property value hub site template looks like. This is what the EPV website looks like after you deploy the solution and populate it with some authoritative data. Right away, we can see a title, description, and some quick statistics explaining the property makeup of our community, from how many parcels we value, to the split between some residential and commercial properties, as well as the total assessed value. And these statistics are populated directly from your authoritative data. So as your data updates, so will these statistics. As we scroll down, we can see a background section with links to information on how we assess your property to determine your property taxes. And this gives you a place to explain your valuation process, allowing you to be transparent with your community. The EPV com Hub comes with several applications and tools that you can use to make information readily available to your citizens. So here we see the tax liability calculator, um, which is a configuration of Survey 123 that allows one to compute an estimated tax liability on a property. So say I was interested in purchasing a property for $250,000, right away I can enter that number and see that view my estimated assessed value as well as my estimated tax liability per year. And following this, we have an application section that's already populated with a couple of configured applications um, that provide detailed property information. And this solution comes with many, but for example, we see here the tax parcel viewer um, where I can access tax parcels and related assessment data. This app is very easy to configure and use, and I can simply search for an address or zoom in and click on the map 
and for this property I can see ownership information, um, assessed value, land value, um, and even my tax distribution uh, breakdown of where tax dollars are, are being allocated in my community, um, which can be pretty, pretty powerful. Um, right here off the bat we can see that most are going to the local school district, uh, the municipality, and the fire district as well. We also have the floodplain application, which you can use to locate parcels that are impacted by floodplain boundaries. Um, so I want to talk for a second about collaboration. And this initiative site gives you the um, ability for an entry point so that your community can collaborate and get involved by following the initiative and to stay engaged in that two-way feedback um, about valuation within your community. So if I wanted to get involved, if I had an ArcGIS online organization subscription login, I could enter my credentials here um, with a hub premium feature turned on. I can create a hub community account um, or even choose to sign in with, with one of these popular platforms here. So I'm going to go ahead and sign in with my community organization account. And right off the bat, I am presented with some other applications that I didn't already see on the main page as an external viewer. The first application is a residential comp finder app, and this app allows me to find comparable sales in an area based on options and filters that I set. Um, I also have access to a configured survey 123 form that would allow me to start an appeal process if I wanted to appeal the taxes on, on my property. Some people like to have the raw data with which to work, and this data section provides that data to them so that they can go in and grab what they need and download. There's no more having to call your office for a clip zip ship operation. They can handle that all on their own right here. ArcGIS Hub Premium does often offer a community events calendar, and this calendar gives you a way to communicate important dates with your community. For example, when tax bills are due, the last day to appeal your property tax assessment, or even town halls or you know, county council meetings. So say someone didn't have all of their questions answered by all of the information that you provided to them they can contact you. And it's important to put these resources into the hands of the public because they're more likely to have their questions answered and to not have to call or come down to the courthouse. So now that we've had a chance to take a look at the out-of-the-box solution, I'd like to recap some of the applications that we saw today. You know, the Equitable Property Value Hub Initiative is an integrated solution of maps and apps that are delivered as a SaaS offering in ArcGIS Online. And the solution includes the following apps. The Tax Parcel Viewer, which allows access to tax parcels and related assessment information. The Residential Comp Finder, which helps you to find comparable sales in a specific area based on filters and criteria that you select. My tax distribution, um, which is also integrated as a part of the tax parcel viewer. Uh, the property tax assessment appeal, where you can use a configurable survey 123 to file a request for the review of a particular property assessment. The floodplain inquiry application, which helps you to locate parcels that are impacted by floodplain boundaries. The tax liability calculator is an integrated survey 123 that helps an individual to calculate their estimated tax liability right there in the website on the fly. And also access to free and open data used by officials to ensure fair and equitable property value. And of course, the equitable property value hub site where you can educate the taxpayer through a focused initiative that organizes data and information in an understandable way. So just to wrap this up, why is this significant? What is the point of this? You know, local property taxes are really vital to help fund local programs. And more at the local level, we're seeing this around school districts and fire districts is really where the bulk of property taxes go. 
It helps you to provide a modern way to share that property information and sales data with interested parties. And this can be real estate community, taxpayers, title insurers, prospective property owners. It adds transparency and public engagement, and that'll actually increase taxpayer satisfaction and reduced property tax assessment appeals because you're giving them the information they need without having to come into the office, tie up your phones, and it's all using that location-based data and technology that ultimately helps improve outreach. So with that, Brett, I'm gonna turn it back over to you. Thanks.